Shalom, my friends. I have taken up the art of silver smithing <laughs> out of necessity. You know, it's been a reoccurring thing in my life that if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. I mean, I, uh, you know, I wasn't happy with any vehicle to drive unless I kind of built one myself. That's always been true. And most recently, some of you may know that uh, I've rebuilt a 1954 Chevrolet pickup truck. Uh, the body looks like 1954. The mechanics are like 1975. Uh, it's all souped up. I rewired it. I put air conditioning in it and made... Uh, I made my own seats with buffalo hide. I'm doing the interior with buffalo hide. I could go on and on with such things. Well, more recently, um, I wanted a, uh, a pendant. It all, you know, it all started with, I saw this show about the Shroud of Turin. I haven't seen it since, and I'm pretty sure they said on this show that from the shroud they could tell that Yeshua had a pendant um, that said Abba. And I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty cool to know. I'd like to do the same. Uh, and I don't know, <laughs> I think it was on the show. Maybe it was the Ruach talking to me. But, you know, for years I was uh, trying to do that. And then my daughter Michelle was trying to make it happen for me. And, um, Finally, uh, January 28th, this year, 2014, um, uh, she, she found a way to uh, get one made for me. And uh, here's what that one looks like. Uh, it says Abba in the pictograph. And in the background is Yeshua's face. Next, in March this year, I wanted something that was of better quality. I mean, I treasured that necklace because it was from my daughter, but, uh, you know, the chain irritated me, and uh, the quality of the pendant really was, uh, was kind of poor. So I redid it myself with the same theme. It had the Shroud of Turin, a picture, and uh, Abba in the, uh, the ancient pictographic Odiote that I teach on my channel, and I put it on my Zazzle store. Um, and uh, it was, you know, much, much better quality. And uh, you can see what that one looks like here. That's the cover. And then, of course, beneath that is the shroud and Abba in the uh, Odeote. As it turned out, however, the silver cover that you see there uh, that part of the pendant really turned out to be a piece of garbage. I was surprised because the other part with the picture of the shroud and uh, Abba in the Odeote, uh that's, you know, really good silver, sterling. Uh, on the back it's stamped 925, which means it's 925 parts out of uh, 1,000 parts uh, silver. Uh, and that's, you know, it's great. And it's a real nice quality, but the cover... Uh, just really soon started looking terrible. So, you know, it's still available on my Zazzle store. There'll be a link at the end of this video uh, if you want to go take a look. Um, but if you do buy that pendant uh, on my Zazzle store, don't buy the optional cover because it just isn't worth it. So, I wasn't real happy with that one either, although in the process I went and I got this chain. This is a, uh, a real high quality chain. See if I can get close to the camera for you. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, it's a real good silver chain. And it's, you know, it's high quality and it's, uh, it's heavier, which, you know, to me, you know, I'm a guy, so I want something uh, heavier. So I was real happy with the chain, but then that cover <laughs> on the pendant, you know, went south on me, so I was like, oh, you know, here we go again. So, um, I was trying to find, you know, aren't there any jewelers around here? I'm in New Jersey. 
that can make something that I want. Well, I, I found a place nearby, like maybe a 10 minute drive from me, in a real nice town called Highland Park, uh, known for its Jewish population. Almost everyone in Highland Park is Jewish. I love that. And uh, there was this little shop on the side, and it's called Highland Spark. And um, it said something, you know, learn, create. I thought, oh, this is, let me go check this place out. So I go inside, and it's all handmade jewelry. I said, oh, this is great. So I talked to uh, a girl there, told her what I wanted. I just had her make uh, a better bail. The bail is the part that uh, the chain goes through so the pendant can hang off of. And make a, a better cover. And I had her made the cover with, uh, in silver. Within copper was um, the oat wall. A picture of a tent peg. Pitch your tent with Elohim. And, uh, you know, she did a nice job. Um, you can see that one here. <laughs> but, you know, I still wasn't satisfied with this because it just didn't have any real craftsmanship showing with it. It was a bit plain. Well, while I was in the store, uh, I noticed they had three workstations in the back. And a bunch of really cool looking tools and I made a remark. I says, boy, I bet I can have a lot of fun with those tools back there. And the owner of the shop, she says, well, you know, we have uh, classes. We teach silversmithing the way it was done hundreds of years ago. I says, oh, how much are classes? <laughs> well, eight weeks, uh, $380 or something like that. I says, you have a website? She says, yeah. <laughs> I says, do you need any work done on your website? She says, well, as a matter of fact, I do. Okay, bingo, swap. So um, I did some work on her website. I went and uh, took an eight-week class. It just ended yesterday. The first project uh, I decided to do was to make a pair of earrings. And uh, I thought I would give these to my daughter, Michelle. And uh, I cut out the silver. I hammered it. That's where you see those little divots all over. It's nice. makes it sparkle. And I cut out the uh, oat. Beit represents house and family. And uh, my daughter uh, made me a grandfather this year. So, you know, she's a mommy. I'm a grandfather. It's all about a home and family uh, for her and her husband, too. So I thought I would uh, uh, make those for her. And then uh, my next project was I made a ring. And I decided to give this to my, uh, my older sister, Della. <laughs> and that got me going, you know. I started, uh, started learning how to fashion and work with silver. Um, it was, I was enjoying myself. So then I started working on my pendant. Now, one... One day here at home, uh, I just started messing around. I took three lengths of uh, copper wire and uh, put the three ends of them into a vise and then held on to the rest and started braiding them. And uh, it was, they were a little bit, the braid was a little bit loose, kind of hard to do it tight with, you know, wire. It's kind of stiff. So um, after I was done braiding it, I thought, well, let me try tightening it up. I just twisted them. I just kept twisting, 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 and they twisted all evenly down through the end when they looked fairly snug. I took them out of the uh, vise and hammered them flat. And I came up with this piece. And uh, I thought, boy, look how interesting this is. It's got this great pattern going on to it. I'll have to figure out a way to incorporate this somehow. So I started working on my pendant. And um, now there's another thing going on that I, uh, I was also bent on accomplishing, which is the reason that I, I bought the cover 
for the other pendant on my Zazzle store was because I like them to click. Um, and that goes back to when I was like 18, 19 years old. Uh, I took a, a knot off of a cherry tree. Uh, and I cut it and I sanded it and, uh, you know, I varnished it and I drilled a hole in it and I put it on a necklace. And um, I also had this coin that my dad had given to me. It was pretty special. And I put that on there and I, I wore that for, oh, I don't know, many, many years. And it would always click, you know, if I bent over and then stood back up or when I was walking, it would click. And um, I thought, you know, geez, I remember that years ago. I missed that. So, you know, I got into that, that bit about it clicking. And I thought, okay, I'm going to make this pendant out of silver. I want to trim it with that copper braiding. And um, I want to put a piece of wood behind it. And I thought, ah, I've got this good buddy in Texas, Vince Paulus. He builds custom-made acoustic guitars. They are beautiful instruments. He's been doing it for years. So I shot Vince an email. I says, Vince, can you give me a couple of scrap pieces of some really cool wood that you use for the tops of the guitars? Because it would be the right thickness. And, uh, you know, immediately, the next day, he says, they're in the mail. So <laughs> he sent me some honey mesquite. You can see the scrap pieces that he sent me here. And um, I took the honey mesquite and uh, started working with that. I worked the silver uh, pendant and I outlined it with the braided copper. Uh, I thought, geez, it kind of looks like a musical instrument. So I made a bale and uh, put some copper strips on it, made it look like frets on a fretboard, curled up the bottom of it, kind of like a scroll, hmm, the word. <laughs> and um, I took a piece of the mesquite from Vince and uh, traced out the pendant I made and then cut the uh, mesquite to be the same exact shape as the pendant. Now, yesterday was my last class in the silversmithing. And um, when uh, I got to putting the bail on the necklace, a couple of problems started happening. Uh, I was doing some soldering to the back of the, the bail, and uh, it just, everything went haywire. Which was kind of okay, because when I got done, I looked at it, the bale was way too big. It just really detracted from the pendant. And uh, the second thing that happened was while soldering, let me get up to the close to the camera so you can see this. I don't know if you can see the back of it here. The, uh, the pendant burned. It got burnt. And the, the hole where it was supposed to hang from just was completely compromised, unusable. I thought, oh, geez, what am I gonna do? So when I came home, I cut out another one. Um, the problem with this, it just wasn't as good looking a piece and it was a lot lighter in color. But nonetheless, I was okay. And I made a new bale. But then I had a, a really cool idea about saving the original piece I made. And what I did, let me get up close for this. There you go. What I did there was uh, I made a piece of silver and you know with the hole in the top to hang it from. And then I got some really good glue and uh, took my time glued it right, put it in a vise, clamped it nice and tight, let it sit for a couple of hours, prayed over it. <laughs> ah, but please help me save this piece. Got done, 
perfect. I mean, that silver is adhered to the wood like they are one. Also, it's it's even better because, you know, sometimes I'll I'll move around and the top piece will slide over and there's that real cool accent that shows through. Really happy about this. Um, you know, you can see the uh, the copper outline. I had to, uh, on the top, I had these these three ends of the wires. I wasn't sure what to do with them. Curled them up, hammered it all flat, soldered it to the silver. Of course, the first thing I did was I cut the oat out, and this oat is tsad. It's a picture of a path. It represents the way. The way to the Father is through Yeshua, HaMashiach. So um, the, uh, the copper, <laughs> I hammer it flat with this hammer using that flat side. And the silver, where you see all the divots and stuff, I hammered with that little ball end there. Pink, pink, pink. A lot of fun. I made a much smaller bale, hammered the bale, and fashioned it in such a way that it didn't need any soldering. It's just one piece. If I need to take, uh, uh, take it off the necklace, I can. If I need to take the pendants off for any reason, I can. However, I hope and I pray that uh, these will never come off the chain, ever. The other thing about the chain was um, there's no clasp. I don't like, you know, a clasp because, oh, the clasp is here, I have to fix it, you know, drive you nuts. No clasp. My chains have no beginning and no end, just like Abba Father, just like Yeshua. So uh, that's, the <laughs> that's the story about me becoming a silversmith, and there's the end result. You'll see this, uh, you'll see me wearing this from now on in my videos. Thank you for sharing this uh, personal bit with me. At the end of this video, you'll be able to click on a link to go over to Vince Paulus' website. You can see the guitars he builds. And there will be a link to Highland Spark, uh, where I learned how to do silversmithing. And you can see uh, about their classes and also see some of the beautiful jewelry they make there. Um, they have some really, really nice stuff. Leela is the owner there. And she is a sweet person. She helped me. Uh, uh, she was really fun to work with. So that's it, my friends. I'll see you soon. Shalom. And I consume enough is time alone with you Underneath a naked moon Sharing confidential moods And making chatter Mockingbird nocturnal sings Notations of eternal things Entering the quantum breeze Flying not for want of wings He lights his gaze on you and me